when Jesus came to the place called Gethsemane, he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took two of them with him, or three of them, Peter and the two sons of Zebedee's. And he told them, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Stay here and watch with me. He went in a little further and fell on his face and prayed, My father, if possible, let this cup pass from me. But not my will, but thine be done. And when he came out, he found the disciples asleep. And he said to them, So you couldn't even keep watch for me for just an hour? Just one hour, that's all I ask, to watch for me. Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the faith, the flesh is weak. He went in again the second time and prayed. Father, if this cup can't pass from me unless I drink it, your will be done. In the process of his prayers, the Bible says that he was dripping drops of blood because of the pressure of his prayers. Now, I talked to Sam before about this, and it's medically possible. I don't know how. But imagine being so in tune, so wondering that your flesh would drip drops of blood instead of water. Again, he came out and he found the disciples sleeping again. And he went back in and prayed for the third time, saying the same prayer over and over. Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. And he finished, but not my will, but thine be done. He heard a noise, and as he heard that noise, he got up and came out, and he saw a bunch of soldiers and a big crowd coming up the, the mountain to the Garden of Gethsemane. And the thing that Judas had told the high priest and the Roman, Roman soldiers was when I walk up and I kiss him, that will be Jesus. So Jesus, Judas walked up to Judas. Or G, Judas walked up to Jesus and he leaned over and he kissed him on the cheek. Judas missed heaven by 12 inches because the distance from here to your heart's approximately 12 inches. Judas had a head knowledge but not a heart knowledge. He kissed him on the cheek. They grabbed him, took him, bound him, and they led him down the mountain to have a trial. Judas betrays Jesus with a kiss. There were several trials over the next few hours. The first was Caiaphas, the high priest, the religious leader, the man that knew Scripture, the man that was there to teach Scripture. P 
Peter followed at a distance. Why did he follow at a distance? Because he was afraid. Because he did not understand. The high priest kept trying to find someone to give false witness against Jesus. In the process of this, someone came up and said, this man was with Jesus. And Peter said, no, I never knew him. Then someone else came and accused Judah, uh, Peter of being with Jesus. And he said it again, not I. And then the third time they came. And Peter denied Jesus three times. Just as the Bible said. They kept trying to figure out how they could put Jesus to death. Because Jesus had done nothing. Nothing at all. They'd ask Jesus a question. Are you the Son of God? And Jesus kept silent. Are you the Christ, the Son of God? Jesus said, You have said it yourself. The high priest tore his robe off and mocked him and said, You are blaspheming God. He deserves death. And he spit on him and beat him with his fist. And others slapped him. He did this for us. Jesus was then taken to Pilate, the governor. The religious people wanted Jesus put to death. That was the whole reason of the trial is they wanted Jesus put to death. Jesus stood before Pilate and he questioned him. Are you the king of kings? Are you the king of Jews? Jesus said, it is as you say. Pilate sends Jesus to Herod. Herod questioned him at some length. And after treating him with contempt and mocking him and making fun of him over and over and over, he dressed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him back to Pilate. Why did he send him back to Pilate? Because Pilate was the one that would make the decision. Pilate tries Jesus again and asks him all the questions, the same questions all over again. Are you the king of the Jews? Are you the Jesus, the Christ? And Jesus answered, It is what you say. Pilate then turns to the crowd of people and said, I find no fault with this man. Nor has Herod. Again, it's the religious that are trying to kill Jesus. Therefore, I will punish him and I'll release him. And the crowd pursed out, crucifying, crucifying. And Pilate asked, well, what shall I do? And they say, give us Barabbas. Barabbas? A thief? A murderer? I find no fault with this man, and yet you want me to turn loose someone that is guilty of a crime? Crucifying! They kept repeating over and over. 
Pilate said, I'm going to release him. And they wouldn't listen. Crucify him. Pilate pronounced a sentence on Jesus. Death on the cross. And he released Barabbas. He released him to the Roman soldiers. They mocked him. They beat, beat him. They stripped him. They put a scarlet robe on him. They spit in his face. They pulled his whiskers. They blindfolded him and hit him and asked who it was. A terrible beating that he got. They put thorns on his head. A reed in his hand. And knelt down again and mocked him. King of the Jews. He spit on him. Beat him. They ripped his skin with the cat of nine tails which is a whip that has glass and rock and metal in it on the end of a whip. And they took that whip and they were experts. They would pop him with that whip and catch it just right and they'd rip his skin apart. And they beat him over and over and over. The Bible says that he was not recognizable as a man. Why did he do it? For you. That's the only reason Jesus went to the cross. They led him up to Golgotha. On the way to Golgotha, as he was being led up to Golgotha, they found a man named Simon, whom they made to carry the cross because Jesus was so weak. And when they had gotten to Golgotha, the place of the skull, they crucified him. Does he feel, still feel the pain every time we fail? He did it for us. As Jesus hung on the cross, they took his clothes. And because they were of some value, they decided not to rip them apart. But they cast Lot for his clothes to keep from tearing them. So therefore, he hung naked on the cross. The embarrassment. Naked. For the whole world to look upon him. They put a crown of thorns on his head. A crown of thorns would take and they took him and they rammed him in there. And the thor thorns cut his head and his flesh. And he was bleeding. Side note. In today's TV world, you cut somebody right here because they ble bleed so bad. Jesus was bleeding all the way around his head. Blood running in his eyes, down his face, in his hair. They put a marker above his head that said, Jesus, the King of the Jews. A robber was placed on each side of Jesus. One was forgiven and one was not. Even today, the most cruel death known to man is the crucifixion. Why? You die of crucifixion a lot because of suffocation. Because you're hanging on the cross like this. Your arms stretched out. And if you take your arms and you stretch them out above your head and just keep holding them there, you run out of breath. 
you can't keep your breath. So instead of running out of breath with your arms stretched out, they would take their feet and they would stand up to loosen the pressure on their arms and the nails in their hands. They would stand there on the cross, lifted up so they could breathe, so they wouldn't be in so much pain. Before time went too long, their legs would grow weak, and instead of letting themselves down easily, they would just collapse and the nails would rip their hands apart. Pain, anguish. So they would lift their arms, their legs up again and then drop down every time tearing their skin just a little bit more, causing more pain. As the time went on, Jesus got weak. You go back and forth, back and forth in agony. Jesus dies. Darkness falls on all the earth from the sixth hour till the ninth. About the ninth hour, Jesus cries out with a loud voice, My God! My God! Why have you forsaken me? At that moment, God turned his back on Jesus. Because God can't look at sin. And Jesus had taken the sin of the whole world on himself. A few minutes later, he cried out again. It is finished. And the Bible says he gave up the ghost. He wasn't saying it's finished and I'm dying. He's saying my job has been done. Because I died for the sin of the world. The Bible says that he went to hell. And then he resurrected. The veil was torn from the top to the bottom. Why is that important? Because man couldn't tear it. It was number one, too thick. Number two, it was too high. The veil was just ripped apart, torn from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split apart. The tombs were opened and many bodies of the saints were raised and entered into the city and appeared to many. The centurion and the guard said, Truly, this was the Son of God. Jesus was buried in a borrowed tomb. In the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. A Christian. A follower of Christ. A religious leader that had been converted. He gave his own tomb for Jesus to be buried in. They put him in the tomb and they put a rock at the entrance and posted a guard and made the grave secure. And they set a seal on the stone because they were afraid that his body would be stolen. Now after three days, the Sabbath, as it began at to dawn, the first day of the week, the grave was opened. Imagine. Guards posted, the seal. You know, the guards were could be put to death if somebody came into the grave. Mary Magdalene and Mary came to the grave. They got up early. A severe earthquake had occurred for an angel had come from heaven and rolled the stone away. The guards shook with fear. 
the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus. He is not here. He's risen. Just as he said, Come and see. Go quickly and tell the disciples. And they left, and Jesus met them on the way. They fell at his feet and worshipped him. Jesus said, Go and tell the disciples to leave Galilee. They will see me there. They returned to the disciples and reported all they had seen, that they had seen the Lord. But these words appeared to them as nonsense. The followers of Jesus, they didn't believe it. And they wouldn't believe. But Peter and John got up and ran to the tomb. John got there first. By the way, Peter got up first and started running. John got there first and stopped. And then running inside, Peter followed. As they looked at the tomb, they saw the linen cloth lying there. Then Peter ran in the rest of the way and saw the linen wrapping and the face cloth rolled up in a place by itself. Christ appears to Mary Magdalene. Christ appears to the disciples, not Thomas. Christ appears to the other women. Guards report of his resurrection. He appears to the two disciples on the way to Emmaus. The fact of the resurrection. Acts 1, verse 3. To these he, Jesus, also presented himself alive after suffering by many many convincing proofs appearing to them for over a period of 40 days and speaking things to him, to them, concerning the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 5. Cephas... Cephas then of the twelve. The twelve disciples in Cephas saw Jesus. Verse 6. Seen by more than 500 people at one time. Verse 7. Jace, James and all the apostles were with him. They all saw him. I hear something out there. Verse 8, and this is the one I looked up and researched back and forth. And it's in there. Verse 8, he was seen by Paul. In Acts 9, verse 5, Paul was on the right way to Damascus. And he said, why are you persecuting me? Paul, why are you? Saul. Why are you persecuting me? Why are you kicking against the goad or the prick? Is what he said. And Paul said, Who are you? And Jesus said, I am Jesus, who you are, present tense, persecuting. I don't know if there's anyone here today that don't know Jesus. It's as simple as the thief on the cross. You just have to believe. You ask Jesus to forgive you for your sins, and you believe. That's all it is. And I can promise you, on God's Word, that He'll come into your heart. He'll change your life. And then you'll be living with Him. And one day, like the service I'm doing this afternoon, because you make that decision, you'll be able to spend eternity with Him. 
It's not about going to church. It's not about living a good life. It's about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm not going to do another invitation. I'm not going to sing another song. I'll just say, if you want to talk to me after church, I'm here. I'm going to Nashville, but they'll understand if I'm late. Let's close in prayer. God, thank you for the service. Father, I hope that it touched lives. I hope that we have a clear understanding of what you did for us on the cross. And I hope that the message goes out today in churches across America that lives will be changed and your kingdom will be built because that's the only one that's everlasting. The choice is heaven or hell. It's not the grave. It's not a party. It's heaven where you'll live with Jesus eternally or hell will burn forever and not burn up. Where the worm does not die. But worse than that, the separation from you. Thank you for the service. For it's in your son's name. Amen.